What is up guys? In today's video, we're going to be talking about ARM assembly stack management. By the end of this video, you'll be able to write ARM assembly that uses functions where they use the stack for memory storage. To be able to do this, we first have to talk about what is a stack. A stack is a basic structure in computer science similar to a stack of plates in your kitchen. You're able to push and pop elements onto and from the stack, which makes it a first in last out data structure. So for example here, we'll see that every item on the stack is equal width at four bytes and you have this arrow here that points to the top of the stack. When I push an item onto the stack, that arrow that points to the top of the stack goes up by four bytes and this new item is put on top. Then to remove an item from the stack, I pop it off, the item goes away, and that arrow goes down. This is a very simple structure without the computer engineering aspects of it. So how does the stack apply to computer engineering and assembly? Well, when people say the stack in assembly, they're referring to an area in RAM where programs put their local variables and control flow information during code execution. The processor actually has two registers that point to the top and bottom of a stack frame. A stack frame is just a chunk of the stack where one function is living. So for example, over here on the right, we have this area here, the area between FP, which points to the bottom of the stack frame, and SP, which points to the top of the stack frame, is the stack frame for one function. And in this example, this is the stack frame for main. It is important to note that the top of the stack is actually a lower address. So as your stack gets bigger, the address of SP gets more and more negative or, or lower. So to be able to write assembly that does this, we have to actually understand this idea of calling conventions. So a calling convention is an agreement between two parties when you're writing code. We'll be talking about two functions, the caller and the callee. So I've written this toy code here, uh, a function main, calls a function other function. In this example, main is the caller and other function, and up here, is the callee. The calling convention on ARM asserts that the callee will preserve non-volatile registers if they're used. Basically what this means is that when main gives code control to other function, when it gets out of other function, it expects that registers four through 11 were put back in the same state. Also, it's expected that the callee other function will return code control back to main once its code execution is complete. So basically it expects after return A gets ran, code execution will go to the next line in the code, which is line 13 return zero. Uh, it's very important to note that because this will determine the assembly output of the function. So this code here that I'm circling produces this assembly here. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna walk through this assembly and kind of draw the stack here. Doing this will allow us to understand what's happening under the hood and better enable us to write assembly that uses stack frames. So we're going to assume that the stack is in this state, right? So like I said before, the frame pointer at the bottom and the stack pointer at the top constitute the stack frame for main. Currently, the program counter is at this instruction here, move into R0, the number one, and it's getting ready to execute the other function, right? So that's this call this line here line 12 so we're going to click forward it runs the code branch and link to other function the branch and link all it does is it gives code control to other function and what the link does is it says put into the link register the address of the next instruction to be ran right so at this time the link register on the processor points to the next instruction that needs to be ran. Very important to remember that. So we're gonna have this arrow here pointing to where a link register points to. Good, so code execution goes to other function and it runs the push, the frame pointer and link register operation. It's important to note that the frame pointer is register 11 and link register is register 14. It's gonna put the registers on the stack in ascending order. So link register goes first, the frame pointer goes, goes next. And don't forget, every time we push onto the stack, the stack pointer goes up, right? So we used to point to four, and now we point to the old frame pointer. Then we're gonna run this instruction here where we say, add four to the stack pointer and put it into the frame pointer. And basically that's gonna move the bottom of the stack. We're getting ready to create that new frame. It's moving it a little higher. It's pointing to the bottom over here where link register points. So this next instruction, the subtract eight from SP and store it into SP instruction, sub SP SP eight, that is creating room on the stack for other function to have its own variables. So you can see here when it does the rest of the, uh, the function, local variables in the function are referred to as frame pointer relative. So it's saying point to the frame pointer minus eight. So it's minus four minus eight. That's a local variable. The frame pointer minus eight, again, local variables. So all of the memory operations are happening frame pointer relative. So other function gets ran. It does that printf, right? It printfs the number that we give it. And eventually we get to the point where we're now collapsing the stack frame. 
So what it does is it says subtract four from FP, which points to here. Remember, uh, subtractions go up and put that into SP. And then we're going to pop off the stack back into the frame pointer and to the program counter. So this old FP becomes the new FP. And then the link register, which is pointing to the instruction that needs to get ran, is what goes into PC. So these two things get popped off the stack. It's very important to recognize that. And through that, code execution gets put back to where the link register points, and the stack frame is back in its old position. I always like to do those visualizations when we're talking about the stack. I think it makes things a lot easier if you can see it kind of happening instruction by instruction, and I think visualizing it like this makes it very easy. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hop over into my dev environment. We are gonna write some code to actually implement this in assembly by ourselves. Let's make it happen. Before we get started, I just wanna say it looks like about 84% of you watching right now are probably not subscribed. If you are not subscribed, do me a favor, hit that sub button, it really helps me out. Be alerted whenever I put out a new video about low level topics. With that, let's get rolling. Okay, so now we're back in the dev environment. Um, what we're gonna do for this tutorial is we are going to use the hello world code that we use in the previous tutorials, all my other videos. Um, but what we're gonna do is instead of having the write syscall and the exit syscall just happen here, we're actually going to create functions for them that start will call and we'll set up stack frames so that they have memory space in those functions that we can use. So first edit we're gonna make is we need to create two labels, right? So we're gonna do a hello world label that describes the area of the code where the write syscall happens and then we have the exit syscall. This actually makes no change to our code at all. It behaves exactly the same. All we have now is a human readable label uh, in the assembly and a debug symbol will actually populate in the elf. Um, okay, cool, so that didn't change anything. What we want to do is do a branch in link, well, that's, that's a call in ARM to hello world. The idea being that hello world will execute. It will return control back to the caller as we talked about, start. Um, and then we'll be able to branch and execute exit. Um, so this also will work not the way we want it to. Um, what actually happens here is branch and link to hello world happens and then hello world just runs all the way through and, and exits and that's it. So what we wanna do now is set up a stack frame on hello world where we A, preserve and return link register control back to PC and also where we create room for hello world to do variable storage. So as we talked about, we need to first preserve all the non-volatile registers, which are R4 through 11. And what's cool about ARM assembly is that we can literally just type R4 through R11 in one instruction, and that's actually a valid ARM. It's pretty cool. Uh, and then finally, we need to preserve LR, because at this point, the link register points to line eight here. We need to make sure that we preserve that so when we pop LR into PC, the code continues to run properly. So now that we've pushed all these variables onto the stack, we have FP way down at the bottom of the stack frame, and we have SP way at the top. So we need to move into FP, SP. So what this actually does, and I'll have a little graphic pop up over here, um, this brings SP and FP up to the same level, right? So now FP and SP both point to the top of the stack where all these items live. Now we need to do the subtract instruction. And remember, this subtract instruction is what gives hello world stack frame its space to do memory storage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do sub into SP from SP hex 40. So this is actually going to give hello world hex 40 or 64 bytes of memory to work with when it's doing its operations, right? So now that we have that room, we can do memory storage onto the stack. Uh, I can say, for example, load into register R1, and remember R1 is a volatile register, so we can do whatever we want with it. Um, load the number hex one three three seven. Okay, great. And then we can store that number R1 onto the frame pointer minus, excuse me, minus hex 10, right? So what we're actually doing is we're saying, take this number, put it into register, and then store that register onto our stack. Pretty cool, right? And make sure it's all compiles and assemblies and all that good stuff. Oh, excuse me. Great, and it still works just as we expected. But again, there's no code control coolness happening here. It's all just jumping right here and, and executing, or in, in exiting rather. Um, so the way we have to get control back to start, which we want it to do, is we need to do something like this. We need to make sure that we pop all the elements off of the stack the way that we push them. And the way that we have to do that is first we have to move into SP 
the frame pointer. So what that does is it brings SP from way up at the top of the top of our stack, remember, because we subtracted it by 40, and it makes it up at the same level at FP. And at this point, FP points to R4 through R11 and LR. And then once we do that, we're able to pop off of the stack all those same registers exactly as we found them. Oh, and actually, so instead of LR, we don't want to pop into LR. We want LR to become PC. That's the difference. So link register at this point points to line eight. We want the value of the link register to become the program counter, which is actually a legal ARM instruction. Really, really cool. Boom. So it works. We're not done 100% yet. So what's happening here right now is hello world is getting called. Hello world is setting up a stack frame making room for itself, putting a variable on the stack because it wants to, because why not? We're in assembly land. We can do whatever we want. Um, it's doing that right syscall, and then it deconstructs its stack frame, and it pops off all the registers and goes back to exit. And then exit gets called, and exit does, does its magic, right? And we're going to set up a little baby stack frame for this one. Um, this is also valid because we are not using R4 through R11. So we actually can just push FP and LR and no one really cares. Um, and we're not gonna set up any variable space here because we're not gonna put any variables in the stack. So we pop FP PC. This is a pointless instruction because by the time we, we can't ever get here because the program should have exited. If it doesn't, what'll actually happen is we will, uh, yeah. So this code will run forever actually. If this exit code doesn't get, get executed, it'll pop the FP and the PC on from the stack that will call hello world and then hello world will run through here and then it'll crash so it'll actually run one time more and then crash um but anyway so what have we done we have written arm assembly that uses two function calls each of the functions in its own way sets up a stack frame and in one of the functions we're able to actually use that stack frame for local variable storage Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, do me a favor, hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment with what you want to see next, and I'll see you guys next week for the next video. Keep on learning. Stay sharp. Bye-bye.